Hi, I'm Paul. I'm uh, one of the guitarists for Silence in Surrender, a four-piece originals hard rock band from South West London. And this video is about how I constructed uh, the band's new rehearsal studio, which you can see in the background here. Um, so this video is going to be in three parts. The first part is uh, an internal tour, just uh, highlighting the key features of the building uh, and sort of going over those. The second part will be uh, a brief look at the outside of the building uh, and then the final part of the, the uh, video will be based around the uh, actual construction of it, uh, especially uh, in relation to soundproofing. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, get on with the, uh, the internal tour. Okay, to begin with we'll look at the doors and the windows, the openings. Um, from a soundproofing perspective, these are always the areas where you'll lose the most sound. Um, now, starting with the door, um, the outside door is effectively it's a UPVC door, pretty standard, apart from it's got uh, acoustic glass, so it's a bit more expensive. Uh, then you've got a, quite a significant gap, and uh, I'll go over the details of that um, in the soundproofing section. Um, but the internal door, again, it's just a pretty standard uh, oak door. Uh, again, oak is pretty good for uh, sound absorption. Um, there's a few other woods. I think pine is also pretty good. Um, moving on, uh, just to the left of that, you can see one of many uh, panels. Um, these are fire blast panels. Uh, and these are not to do with the soundproofing element, but are to do with the acoustics of the room itself. Um, effectively, if you've got a lot of um, soundproof surfaces without them kind of being broken up then you'll get a lot of echo uh, and the acoustics of the room will just sound awful really um, so there's there's quite a few of these along the walls um, I'm hoping at some stage to put some on the ceiling as well um, at the moment though I'm, we're pretty happy with the acoustics in the studio um, moving on uh, we've got the we've got the windows now, uh, when you're designing a studio, uh, I mean, most of them don't have uh, windows. In this case, given the cost of the building uh, and the fact I wanted it to be able to be used for other factors or other uses um, uh, in addition to uh, a rehearsal studio, uh, I decided to put windows in. Now, there's two sets. There's one one set, uh, the outer set that basically open outwards and then you've got sliding windows uh, which I can show you here uh, for the inner set again both of them constructed with acoustic glass uh, moving down there you can see the base amp that is just resting on some pretty standard foam really uh, we're hoping to kind of raise them up a little bit more perhaps um, build something more custom um, so that the sound is more at ear level um, but at the moment that works fine moving on pretty standards like uh, speakers um, up there we've got the fuse box uh, just I missed out these curtains now uh, the reason I put curtains in is two reasons really also, firstly to kind of deflect sound as a, a different type of material secondly obviously there's a lot of high value gear in the building uh, and I didn't want people looking in. So if you're going to get curtains, I suggest you make them black out um, well, for security purposes. Uh, moving on, we've got the, uh, got the main piece, the drum, drum kit that is resting on some insulation just to sort of uh, numb down some of the impact noise from the kick drum, which is, tends to be the aspect that travels the furthest certainly that I've found. Now this can, this insulation can actually be put uh, underneath the carpet. Um, probably should have done that to be honest. But uh, I'll link the details of that. Then we have a pretty standard uh, heating and cooling Mitsubishi unit. Uh, and you'll see, obviously that's in two parts. You've got the external part on the other side of the wall. Um, moving on, uh, we've got the mixing desk on a pretty standard piece of Argos furniture over here. Don't really need to go into much detail on that unless connected up to the speakers. Uh, then we've got my uh, prestige Ibanez uh, and uh, 
EVH 5150 and my pedal board or disco board uh, down here. I could probably do a video about how I made that if anyone's interested. Uh, moving on, uh, we've got well, we've got a couple of soft boxes in the room. Nothing to do with the rehearsal studio, but uh, we're going to do some sort of photography and stuff in here. So that's why they're there. Um, up here above the blue. Uh, acoustic panel, we've got uh, the vents, one of two, you would have seen another one on the other side. There we are, they're pretty, they're acoustic vents, which basically means they're pretty standard vents, except with some kind of acoustic -y foam in the middle of them. Um, and so you've got to be a bit careful with ventilation systems, they can be quite expensive. Uh, we find, or I've found, that uh, these two pretty basic ones do the job pretty well. Um, but there are much more complicated solutions um, and more advanced solutions um, that you can sort of find out there. Uh, now we have uh, the lead singers uh, and other guitarists, Ben, his uh, amps and uh, Jackson. Uh, and, uh, and we've come back to where we started. So for part two, this is a very brief external look at the building. Um, it's a pretty standard building, just um, with UPVC windows, um, externally rendered, um, nothing particularly special there. Uh, along the right hand side um, runs the electricity and internet cables and they run all the way to the main house. Um, directly in front of me is uh, an area where there was a patio which uh, was demolished to provide some additional green space to make up for um, some of the space that was lost as a result of the building at the back um, and that planting process has begun although it hasn't completed as yet there's going to be uh, some shrubs um, surrounding um, this magnolia tree um, moving on There's a sort of stepping path made out of um, the slabs from the demolished patio and uh, likewise for the a sort of porch area there. Um, and the only other thing of note is just where the cables sort of run, um, are buried and run underground into the building. Uh, and above that is the uh, outside part of the uh, heating and cooling unit. So in this third part of the video we'll be going over the soundproofing and construction elements to the building. You can see it at its first stage which is pretty standard just with digging of foundations and uh, creation of concrete base. Um, in terms of its dimensions, um, these are the rough dimensions as shown on the plan. It's not 100% accurate, it was just there to show where the power points were going to go. It's only an electrical plan and fused board. So following that, uh, following the foundations, uh, was the erection of the external walls um, which was a breeze block outer wall and we picked that because it had a better sound coefficient um, over standard bricks and see that in the photographs coming up and to the inside of those um, walls and of the ceiling we screwed in um, a layer of rock wall I think it was at MW3 because that had the best soundproofing coefficient across all the frequency bands um, or the most consistent. Um, after that, it's extremely important to have a air gap um, between your outer and the internal layer, and that's a key part of the soundproofing element. So when you've got your air gap, um, we had that, and then we inserted the inner stud wall um, with rock wall cut to fit um, within that timber frame, as you can see in, in the photo. Um, following that, once that had been completed, we screwed in a layer of acoustic plasterboard to the inside of that inner stud wall, and uh, and that can be seen on the sectional photograph here, which shows the four layers in place. On the inside of that, um, there was a layer of green glue added, which effectively is expensive, but it, it converts sound waves into heat and can be very effective as a soundproofing measure. Uh, following that, uh, obviously added another layer of acoustic plasterboard um, and screwed that in place and uh, these photos show the building 
um, at that stage pre and post plastering. Um, overall, um, that created with the air gap a thickness of around 43 centimeters, which is obviously a lot thicker than the standard standard wall, which is about 300 millimeters thick. I should say at this stage that uh, the builders that I used were not specialist uh, in any way. They were pretty standard builders, um, and the design and the soundproofing elements to the building. Um, were informed uh, to a great degree by a set of videos released by another YouTuber um, who has designed and constructed their own um, drum studio. Um, I will link the details of those videos because it's extremely helpful and they go into um, even more detail about soundproofing elements um, in terms of constructing the building. Uh, in terms of soundproofing performance I'm pretty happy with it generally. It doesn't cut out all the sound particularly the low end of the drum kit um, does carry into the garden um, but most importantly the surrounding dwellings um, the surrounding houses when you're standing in those living rooms um, there's no real disturbance it certainly isn't noticeable um, and I certainly haven't had any complaints just yet um, so that concludes the video um, I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, then uh, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.